Hi, Hi guys! Welcome back to another video. Today we are gonna be reacting and I'm so excited and hope you guys are well. Yeah, thank you so much guys for being so supportive yeah. to us. So this time we have our subscribers. By the way, for those who have subscribed, thank you so much yeah. for supporting our channel. And for those who haven't yet, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video and comment down below. Yes, please. And there was this subscriber actually who mm -hmm. suggested that we have to have a look which is the what we call this an open door jewish, jewish rescue, rescue in the, in the philippines. philippines so we're going to have a look and i'm yeah. very interested you see because i yeah. would like to know exactly how it started so yeah. this time and without further ado we're going to have a look now yeah. okay so we have to watch now let's get started it's an open door jewish rescue in the philippines mm -hmm. survivor what's that yeah that was during those times when consecration we were, we were like world war ii uh, remember yeah so he he's actually one of the holocaust survivors she sorry <laughs> we would go to the park nearby and we would by the time we were five we would see benches that would say dogs and Jews not allowed and couldn't quite understand what all this was about. Uh, when Hitler came to power in 1933, I was two years old. And uh, my father, being the chairman of the Socialist Party in Cologne, which was one of the two parties that opposed the Nazis, also one. Uh, yeah. the Communist Party being the other one, was accused by the Nazis of having murdered two Nazis. Oh, no. In my mind, concentration camp, I knew it was a terrible place and we would most likely be killed there. So it was fear, terrific fear. And um, we were, so we started hiding. We were told that there was basically a man in government who was an anti-Semite and who was very antagonistic towards the Jews. We would take the train home and very often there were kids waiting for us, uh, older kids, uh, as we came out of the train station and they started running after us eight kids and throwing stones at us and calling us dirty Jews. So I became a very fast runner. In 1937, um, a group of Nazis came to the door with a German shepherd and uh, wanted to see about the Jewish books. And my dad had quite a library. A dog frightened me terribly. It was a big police dog. And they took the books. There were a uh, fair number amount of Jews living in that apartment house. They took all these books, took them into the backyard of the apartment building, and uh, there was a whole pyre that was built and, and basically burned all those books. Oh. In a world turned upside down. German citizenship away from my mother, my father, and myself. So now we were stateless. My dad was arrested and was arrested like in the Breslau Town Hall. My mother told me that, uh, told my brother and I, that uh, my dad was away on a trip, on a, on a business trip. Really never divulged that he would, had been arrested. And, uh, but cried bitterly, and we couldn't understand why she was crying. My father was told by the Nazis that he had to sell, get rid of all his houses. He could only take 
a hundred marks out. With the implementation of the Nuremberg Laws and depriving all German Jews of their German citizenship, this that enabled then the the government to she confiscate to businesses, to confiscate homes, to appropriate all their assets. It was not a physical extermination, but it was a social annihilation because it it annihilated their place in the social fabric of German society and treated them as non gratis as foreign enemies living among society. Non gratis? Imagine that. My father's family left Germany in 1939, so it was late. And in fact, my father's uncle, Walter, uh, with whom he was very close, was actually taken by the Nazis um, and, and killed in a concentration camp. Um, they were well-educated German Jews who believed that this was not going to affect them. When we got this telephone call, we packed our bags, we left within an hour, and all of our furniture, everything else, pots, pans, dishes, whatever was in the kitchen, we left behind. And uh, we never went back there. We thought any minute they're going to stop the cars and send us off to a concentration camp. A new law came out concentration camp. German uh, Aryans were not to go to uh, Jewish physicians or not be treated by Jewish physicians anymore. And then my father realized that the time is up and he should better start looking around for another country to Some take country him. queuing up there just to get on. Mm -hmm. When we boarded the ship, it was, it was a bit exciting for me. Mm -hmm. It was sort of an adventure. Oh, she was a and I felt then. somewhat secure. I had my brother there. I had my parents there. I know I was going to a new country, but it was somewhat exciting. Philippine president with his Jewish and American allies finds a way to set it right. Wow. Um, I wonder who that Philipp Philippine rep president was. Oh, it was Manuel El Kazan. Okay, like that most was the Philippines was Catholic. President and Philippine yet he developed an affinity for Jews because he felt that there was a sort of a symbolic brotherhood between between Filipinos and Jews. Oh. That is, that as the Filipinos were were the recipients of racial discrimination and bigotry on the part of many Americans at that time, that the Jews were similarly the recipients of, of bigotry by the Nazis. And so even though Kazan had extremely important and critical political and economic issues to wrestle with at this time, he was willing to take a stand to help the Jews. My father applied to the Philippines, but didn't know at all where it was, what it was. All he knew was it was somewhere in the Pacific. Okay. <clears throat> so he looked up his encyclopedia, uh, which was published in 1898, we found out it's later. The year, 1898. And, um, he read that this was a uh, an island discovered uh, or a set of islands, seven thousand islands discovered by Magellan. Oh, how many uh, it's islands? Under the Spanish 7, crown. Spanish was the national language, so right. naturally we immediately started studying Spanish. Uh -huh. When we got to the Philippines and we're staying in the boarding house, where there are all sorts of different pe people. Uh, Filipinos, mestizos, Caucasians, etc. I didn't never made, to me, there was never any distinction. To me, they were all people. And to this day, I feel that way. But uh, it was never a distinction to me. I was very impressed because we rode up Dewey Boulevard into Pasay. Oh, Pasay. And it's a lovely beach, lovely Where beaches. Manila, uh, beautiful, the, the banana trees. Oh, banana and, trees. And, uh, there were yeah, polo grounds, I remember. Mm -hmm. One Very of the things we did fairly often 
was go to the movies. Oh, and there were the uh, half a dozen good movie theaters in the Philippines. The Lyric, the Ideal, the Gaiety Theater. Oh, I would Columbia. say mm -hmm. we probably went to the movies maybe once every couple of weeks. That's why have you noticed the, the structures in the Philippines is yeah, is mixed like yeah. American-like uh, It's a uh, metal, buildings. it's a round metal thing with oh. uh, strips of, of uh, paper, I believe, and you kick it with your leg. And the one oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The most, of mm, course, that's the winner. Sepak, when you the crow, saw I think. how the doors were basically closed to all of us except the Philippines, oh. and how the Filipino people are a very warm people, they're a very friendly people. It's true. I, I could we be a little bit. Filipino there. songs and. Um, Oh, God, my tissue. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Art is very important. And Filipinos have very, very good voices. Yes. yes. My father nice. spoke often of his Filipino so friends. So beautiful. And recounted things that were these small moments, but clearly moments that for him were all about friendship and happiness and something that was very uh, lighthearted. As we were sleeping in the middle of the night, the house was shaking as if there was an earthquake. Everybody woke up. So we ran outside and stood in the street while the houses were shaking. But there were these large booms, booms, booms. Uh, it turned bones, out that yeah. we were being bombarded by the Japanese. Oh, we had daily air raids. And they were awful. Just a siren. Mm -hmm. It was groups of four, four, and four, which you could barely see. Uh, exceedingly well trained. And of course, they bombed at random. And it was a very frightening experience. Shortly thereafter, all of our friends, that were either American, Canadian, British, or French, <clears throat> which were the allies, enemies of the Japanese, um, were rounded up by the Japanese and interned at Santa Tomas. The irony of this is that these refugee Jews from Germany and Austria who had passports identifying them as German Jews are not arrested by the Japanese. The Japanese don't care if they're Jewish. They have a German passport. That means that they are an ally and they are not arrested and they are not interned. Or I, I really did not want to leave. That was my home. That was all I, that I knew. I was there from the time I was seven. Wow. I was there for almost nine years. And, and that was my home. And then the reception for Jewish refugees. refugees. For me, the Philippines, uh, it may not be my motherland, but my adopted motherland. Mm. Because... <laughs> If it had not been for it, I would not be the person that I am now. Roosevelt and Churchill saved Western civilization.
but Quezon, and so few people know that, President Quezon of the Philippines saved 1,200 Jewish souls, as many as Schindler, maybe even more. And, and that is the, the epitome, basically, of Judaism. It says if you save one soul, you save mankind. Enter a story of love, rescue, and brotherhood. <sighs> now what? The, that was it, guys. Sorry for that. Feeling so emotional. Just really blessed because watching it is oh sorry. Would you like to say anything first? Very educational. And yeah. Sad. That was actually happened when you. Yeah. Yeah. That was at that time. But it just really touched. It really touched my heart because. It's a, because it's an open door, you know, especially for Jewish, totally rescue, I mean, Jewish rescue in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful that President Manuel L. Casson totally, um, you know, helped them. And to think that they began to love the country and they, yeah. they did say that it's like their homeland already. And a while ago, well, they were mentioning the word, especially the country, the Philippines just really touched my heart because I'm originally from the Philippines and, and, and you know, we're just the same wherever we, you know, wherever we are. The main important thing is the love, you know, the sincerity of the Filipino people and also the, the people at that time who indeed help, especially the Jewish, the German Jewish and some of the Austrian people. And so here it is. I'm just really blessed because being a Filipino as well, you know, is really a, an honor and a blessing as well. So things happen before we're still blessed. And, and one lesson that we have learned from here is got to love one another. Because even, even Jesus, even God, actually, he commands us to love one another. Yeah and also have to accept one another and also accept diversity and we are here as one and what about you what have you learned from that that you should always be kind hey that's right yeah and what else get to help one another too yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's right well yeah. done well thank you guys anyways, yeah thank you so much sorry i really got so emotional and i knew it was a you know, but anyway, I really appreciate it a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I'll give it a shout out to a planet Venice, who actually um, mm -hmm. requested us to check on this. And yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, it's a privilege to watch and really, really uh, thank you for helping all the Jewish at that time, you know, especially Philippines. So mabuhay Pilipinas. And maraming maraming salamat po. May you have a great day. Okay. So thank you Don't very much. Don't forget to subscribe. Yes, please, please like and share. Sorry, yeah. it's emotional. Thank you. you. Have a great day.